this is you know not so much an educational video as it is just us having fun make you know making some beer and I figured I'd uh, just kind of take you along and let you see how it goes and try and film some pieces here and there and it's kind of a treat for me because normally I'm doing all the camera work and all the action myself so it's, it's kind of nice just to sit back and film somebody else doing something for a change <laughs> <laughs> all right so what are we doing here we got to boil two and a half gallons of water. Yep, it's, uh, we got two and a half gallons of water, and uh, we're gonna bring it to a boil, or well, just under a boil, like about 170, and uh, because we're gonna steep some grains, as they call it, which are uh, just some different grains. Uh, these are like dark grains that have been uh, roasted, so it'll give it a little bit darker flavor and uh, a little bit darker color. Cool. And uh, so we'll steep those for about 20 minutes at about 170 degrees. And then we're going to uh, add some hops and stuff? Uh, uh, yep, we'll, uh, we'll get it uh, almost to a boil, put in some grains to steep them, and uh, then bring it to a boil and put uh, some hops and some malt extract and some lactose is what this one has in it. Lactose? Lactose. It gives it a uh, kind of a creamy flavor, so it's like a powdered lactose. So this is everything that's going to be going in the beer? Uh, yep, except for the yeast. Except for the yeast? Yep, the yeast is inside just to keep it a little bit warmer. Alright, so you guys saw that I just used that regular old bread, bread yeast for my wine, but my brother has some actual brewer's yeast. Yep. And uh, it's kind of interesting because if you look at this pack it's like mm -hmm. swelled up and ready to explode I mean that's tight it's ready mm -hmm. to just explode right now <laughs> and why is that? Uh, basically it comes not like uh, now puffed like this it comes basically compressed and it's got a little packet of nutrients inside of it and uh, and the yeast so that way uh, when you get it uh, like the day before so I did this yesterday around like three o'clock in the afternoon uh, you sort of like squeeze that little packet of nutrients and it bursts inside and uh, so you sit there and you shake it up a little bit just to get it stirred up and that uh, that nutrient just gets that yeast going um, so that way it'll start you know basically fermenting inside of here like a little miniature brew going on okay and uh, but then it just it's, it's doing co2 that's why it's all pressurized now is just from co2 and uh, so that way now today I know okay that yeast is active it's good it's you know it's very ready solid. to go so when I pour this in it's just gonna be all ready to go nice so, yeah so what is this here? So that's the malt extract. So that's basically um, they took grains like these. So these are like crushed grains, um, and these are what we're going to be steeping. So we'll steep these at like around 170, um, just to basically suck out all the flavor and coloring of it. And uh, the extract, that's basically this stuff steeped, and then they take the the liquid and just condense it down into a very thick syrup almost okay um, so it's essentially for this is what is going to be the fermentable um, sugars when it comes to beer I guess we got to be extra careful with sanitization um that's kind of the rule is anything that touches the beer after you boil it so after after you're done boiling it, anything that touches it needs to be sanitized. Is like the the golden rule. Okay, because we're going ahead and we're we got some sanitizer in this five gallon bucket with the airlock, the bung, the funnel, the yep. little spatula thingy and yep. strainer and everything else. And yep. we got sanitizer in the big carboy that we're going to store this in afterwards. Yep. And uh, we're going to heat that water to. Right around 170 or 170, something. 170. Yep, about 170. And then we just steep all these ingredients. Yep, yep, just the the grains. So we'll steep those grains for about 20 minutes. Steep the grains for about 20 minutes. Which is basically like making tea. You just put it in a a mesh. We'll put it in a uh, a mesh bag, tie it off into a little ball, and then just let it sit in there just like a tea bag. Okay. <laughs> Essentially. So, so yeah, it's basically just like the like the chaga tea or whatever. It's just like that. It's like yeah, like doing shumac tea or chaga yep. tea. And the reason we're keeping it at 170 is we don't want to go too high or it'll take tannins out or yeah, something. I think that's what they say is, is if you go too high, then you have a chance of getting like tannins or like off flavors 
out of the grains. So okay. you want to just get like the coloring and then some flavor and stuff out of those out of those grains. Because that's the same for wild edible teas too, like shumac yep. tea. If you if yep. you boil it, for one, you kill the vitamin C. Yeah. And also, you'll release the talent, the tannins, and yep. that can give a bitter flavor yep. or off flavor. So yep. it's kind of like the same idea, really. Yep. Except now we're making beer. Nice relaxing thing to make. <laughs> yeah, and you said you brought some home brew that we can taste test while we're doing this. Yep, a uh, one's a raspberry wheat beer. Got to get the close up shot here. <laughs> close up raspberry wheat. Yeah, my brother's getting ready to pour him a glass of beer here. One cool thing about this beer making is you can just use your uh, old beer bottles. You don't have to buy them. You can just save beer bottles from uh, the store and reuse them. Ah. Just buy new lids. Nice. That's got a nice mm. head on it too. All right. So we've got this water heated up to, I think my brother said between 150 and 170. Yep. And uh, we just turned the heat off and now he's getting ready to add... So what are we adding here? Uh, they call them specialty grains, and uh, not every single beer kit will have them, but uh, but those that do will just be like a bag of miscellaneous grains, essentially. This is just all dark, but sometimes it would be like light colored or medium colored grains. And uh, But it's basically just, they call them specialty grains, and uh, we're basically just going to put them in this uh, Muslim type of bag cheesecloth bag i don't know exactly what you would call it exactly but muslin bag yeah some kind of bag to kind of let it filter out yep. basically well, basically just empty them out in there but most of it's just again for like the the color and a little bit of flavoring and stuff is what the, the specialty grains are for okay for color and flavor yeah, not so much for like fermentable sugars um just more for the the body the flavor and the color nice so but yeah but then we just put that in there so we just put the specialty grains in here, and yep. And you don't want to, you don't, don't want to like squeeze it around, because again, you don't want to squeeze out any tannins or anything like that. We want to get it, you know, just loose enough. You know, make sure there's water all over. But you can see it just instantly turns the water. Wow! Yeah, it turned it dark that, like coffee. That color. So, but uh, but yeah, and then we'll just uh, make sure the grains are all kind of wet. And we'll just let it sit there for about 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. We'll look at the clock. Cool. What time is it? Uh, 4:22, so about 4:40. We'll be done. And we just want to make sure that uh, the temperature, like right now, it's about 160. So when it starts to get down to, you know, a little bit cooler, we'll turn the flame back on and bring it up to somewhere between 150 and 170. Okay, so the trick is just don't go below 150 and don't go below, above yeah, 170. Yeah, right around there. It, yeah, because it's more just making sure that it doesn't get too hot to get the um, the tannins out or whatever, and then hot enough though so it's actually getting some of the the flavors and sugars and stuff out. So start to finish, it takes about what less than six weeks to uh, have drinkable beer. Yep, right around six weeks uh, for this kit. Some kits a little bit more, some kits a little bit less, but usually the minimum is about four weeks. Uh, average is probably about six, and then some of the higher gravity beers, um, the higher alcohol content, um, those can go a lot higher, like the, the Wee Heavy uh, that you have. That's what I'm drinking. Um, I believe the primary was two weeks, and then I let it in the secondary, I think it was two months, and then I bottled it, and then about a month and a half later is when I first tried one. So. And the Wee Heavy's like what, 10, 11% alcohol? I, yeah, I want to say it was like 10% or 10.5%, I think. So, nice. So when it was fermenting, it was going to town. It was. So if you're somebody that likes beer, you know I'm not a huge beer drinker, but you can really go to town and you can just customize these beers, the alcohol content, the flavor. Yep. I mean, you can add fruit flavors to them. You yep. can just totally go crazy with it. Yep. All right. So we went ahead and steeped these specialty grains for 20 minutes, and now my brother took and put them in this. Uh, little colander and we're just gonna rinse them with some hot water yep yeah because it's uh pretty much it's got a lot of uh since it's been soaking in there there's a lot of like trapped you know coloring and flavoring and stuff uh so it's gonna take some not hot hot water but some you know some decently hot water just from the tap essentially and uh just just rinse them out we don't want to squeeze them again because if we squeeze them then we're gonna 
you know, squeeze out all those tannins and things which we don't want. Same thing with Schumach tea, you don't want to squeeze yep. it because the tannins come out. Exactly. So, so in a way, this is just a lot like the wild edibles, man. Yep. Still pretty dark. Oh yeah, it's coming out real dark. But uh, so we'll get we'll get a lot of it. We won't get all of it, you know, with the amount of water I'm pouring on it. But we just want to get that extra goodness out of there. Exactly. Yep. Because this is what's going to add the color and some flavoring and stuff. So. And now we're starting to heat it back up to get ready for the boil too. Yep. All right, so I had a number six, which was the Wee Heavy, which is like 10, 11% alcohol. It had no head on it, and when my brother brewed it, he said uh, when it came out, it took a long time for that alcohol to build up, but some of them had a nice head and some didn't. And that's just the way it goes when you homebrew, I guess. Now I'm gonna have a number nine, which is raspberry wheat. Yep. And what percentage is this? Uh, I think it's like four and a half, maybe. Oh, so this, this is like a regular alcohol, regular yep. store-bought beer. Yep, alcohol. nice, uh, nice session beer, as they call them. Have a couple of them and one session. And one thing about these homebrew beers is you get a little sediment on the bottom, which you can drink if you want. Or you can just carefully pour it off into a glass and leave most of that sediment on the bottom. And you can see, even though I poured that down the side of the glass, this one's got a really nice head. So let's go ahead and give it a taste. Man, that tastes good. I mean, I'm not a beer fan, and that really does taste good. But my brother's been doing this quite a bit and this is his 11th batch of beer every time he does this he makes five gallons of beer so this will be 55 gallons of beer <laughs> and uh, he noticed that once it hits 100 degrees celsius which is looking at this it's probably pretty close to 212 you start getting a little rolling a little bit of rolling and uh, it's just getting ready to boil we're starting to get that little roll down in there yeah, you, you should be able to see that. Coming up. Yeah, I hope it's showing you yeah, because there's definitely foam coming up. All right, my brother's not the master brewer I thought he was. He's got to look <laughs> at the cheat sheet here. I'm telling you. So we did the uh, we did the steeping of the grains, and then uh, step one. Yep, step one, and then it says uh, bring it to a boil, which we did, and now it says only add half of the uh, the malt extract at this time, and all of the lactose um, bring it to a boil again and then add in the hops and the other half of the malt extract all right and then boil it for an hour okay so that would be step two and three then yep so there's sort of like an extra step in this particular brew yep and it all depends on what you're brewing yep all right, so now we're putting half of the malt extract in. And you got to keep stirring that until it boils or that malt extract will burn on the bottom, you said? Yeah, because you don't want it to, to sort of settle on the bottom and burn because then you'll, again, you'll get an off flavor. All right, well, it's starting to get dark out here, so I don't know if we're going to get to finish this on video or not, but I wasn't going to video this because I really was more interested in just the... Uh, taking a break for work and enjoying the uh, process watching my brother do this now he's adding the lactose yep and now not all beers have this this just happens to be this particular batch of beer but I wanted to at least get this on video for you guys All right, well, we've got it back, back to a boil. We added the lactose and half of the malt. And now my brother's getting ready to add the hops. Yep. So it's uh, one ounce. 
yeah, one ounce of Willamette. Well, different different strains or whatever hops, but they're hops. these are pellets, so it's a uh, good idea of what they look like here. Sort of like uh, a little like rabbit pellets, rabbit pellets, like rabbit food. <laughs> yep, but it's a uh, hop plants or hop uh, rhizomes or whatever they are, uh, just shredded and then compressed in little pellets. Sort of a prefab hops. Yep. Which you could use straight hops if you wanted. Yep. Yep. A lot of people grow their this own. This is just more just convenient. Put them in. But when you add the hops in, it ends up doing a lot of foaming because it does the uh, they call it a hop break or whatever. But because of all the hops, it all of a sudden gets like starch. Yeah, it wants to just boil. So it probably foam creates a lot. a lot of surface friction, like with the maple syrup. Yep. So you got to watch to make sure it doesn't boil over. But this pot's so big that it's it can get close to the top with foam. All right, well, we're running out of light, and uh, I'm going to have to be going to work here in a few, so my brother's going to go ahead and uh, give you a wrap-up on the end of the process. Up until now, we added uh, half the malt, yep. the lactose, and also, once we brought it back to a boil, we added the hops, and uh, we need to let it boil for one hour, and 15 minutes before the end of the boil, we're going to add the rest of that malt extract. Yep which is just that little jug right there yep. and then so basically we just let it boil for an hour in there and then what we put it in the fermenter yep and then uh, well we'll cool it down so we'll take the uh, probably about three quarters of the bag of ice um, and just pour that in here um, to cool it down to, to below 80 degrees essentially and then once that's there then we'll just pour it in the uh, the carboy and uh, shake it up just like you did with uh, with your wine just shake it up really good just to get it oxygenated and stuff right and uh then just pour the yeast in put the airlock on and let it sit there for about two yeah, one and a half to two weeks and uh ferment cool and in a total of six weeks we'll have ready to drink beer right yep five gallons worth five gallons so how many bottles is in five gallons uh it's right around 50 uh, give or take. Um, I usually end up making probably like five and a quarter gallons to five and a half gallons for whatever reason when I fill it up I usually fill it a little bit more. Um, but yeah it's usually about 50, 50 bottles right around there. So this whole process took about two hours to make 50 bottles of beer Yep. and all that's left is putting it in that big glass carboy and letting it ferment for a couple weeks. Yep. Running it off into a secondary. Secondary. For, letting it sit for another. Uh, about two weeks two weeks yep and then uh, then bottle it and bottling takes eh, usually about two hours to, to actually do the bottling and then uh, let it sit in the bottles for another two weeks to uh, to carbonate because I carbonate in the bottle itself and then it's ready to drink and it's ready to drink so six weeks start to finish we got 50 bottles of beer and four hours of labor for the whole process Yep. well that's it guys it's getting dark. I gotta get ready and go to work. My brother's gonna stay out here and finish brewing this up. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, thanks for watching and thanks for all the comments and support.